A stall occurs when the airfoil exceeds a critical angle of attack. A stall can be indicated by onboard stall warning systems, lack of pitch authority, lack of roll control, buffeting, or an inability to arrest a descent rate. This graphic shows the differences that wing shape plays on how an airplane will stall. With a swept wing, there may be little or no break with a full stall. What break does occur may not be pronounced, which can make it more difficult for the pilots to identify a stalled condition. As you get closer to the speed of sound, flow gets supersonic over the upper surface and the shock wave is created, which breaks down the flow and lift. It can cause a reduction in the stall angle of attack and the amount of lift you can get as you increase Mach. The graphic shows undeflected and deflected control surfaces. The aerodynamic effect is that of increasing the lift at a constant angle of attack for trailing edge down deflection. Note that for larger deflections, even though the lift is greater, the stall angle of attack is lower than that at no deflection. Contamination can affect the stall angle. The stall protection system does not consider wing contamination. In extreme cases, the aircraft could stall prior to any indication of a stall. You know that an aircraft wing will stall when the critical angle of attack is exceeded. But we have also talked about a lot of factors that can affect how and when the aircraft will ultimately exceed the critical angle of attack. So which of the many factors are used to trigger a stall warning in transport category airplanes? Ultimately, the stall will depend on angle of attack, Mach number, configuration, and amount of contamination. Transport category airplanes use inputs from angle of attack sensors, Mach number, and configuration. These inputs feed into the stall computer, which in turn generates the stick shaker warning. The CRJ has a dual channel stall protection system computer that monitors the following inputs. Left and right angle of attack vanes. Lateral acceleration from ARs or IRS. Slap flat position. Weight on wheels and mock information from ADC-1, 2, and the ISI. The Stall Protection System, or SPS, provides the flight crew with oral, visual, and tactile indications of an impending stall. If the pilot does not take corrective action, the system activates the stick pusher mechanism. The EDCs supply primary mock data to the SPS computer for mock compensation of the aircraft stall margin. The SPS uses the above inputs to calculate the AOA trip points. When a high angle of attack is approached, the continuous ignition is activated. If the AOA continues to increase, the stick shaker is activated and autopilot is disengaged. If the AOA still continues to increase, the stick pusher is activated, stall switch lights on the glare shield panel flash red, and a warbler sounds. In the event of an AOA increase greater than 1 degree per second, the stall protection computer lowers the activation trip point. This prevents the aircraft's pitching momentum from carrying it through the stall warning stick pusher sequence into the stall. The stall protection computer monitors the rate of change of the angle of attack vane to determine when to disconnect the stick pusher. The stick pusher can be manually stopped by pressing and holding either pilot control wheel autopilot stick pusher disconnect push button. The stick pusher can operate immediately when the APSP disc switch is released. Should the SPS incorrectly activate the stick pusher, the stick pusher may be disabled by selecting either stall protection pusher switch to off. Both switches must be on for stick pusher activation. 
An alternating red and black checkerboard cue is used to visually alert the pilots of an impending stall shaker. The cue descends from stick shaker speed to the bottom edge of the tape window and appears on the PFD three seconds after liftoff. In the landing configuration, as gear down and flaps 45, the top of the cube represents a calculated airspeed of 1.06 VS. The green line, or low speed awareness cue, is provided as a reference only. The pilots must always use the appropriate QRH, ODH, and speed card speeds to ensure adequate safety and performance factors are maintained. The purpose of the low speed awareness cue, or green line, is to promote a visual awareness of the approach speed in relationship to stick shaker activation. The green line is also helpful in determining the maneuver margin available when landing gear is extended and or any flap setting during approach and departure. During cruise, the green line should not be consulted. At higher altitudes or airspeeds, slight differences in the airflow over the left and right AOA vanes caused by side slippage or turbulence may cause splits in the left and right PFD green line positions. This does not constitute a stall protection system failure, and no write-up is required. This very powerful rudder is also capable of generating large side slips. An inappropriate rudder input can produce a large side slip angle, which will generate a large rolling moment that requires significant lateral control input to stop the airplane from rolling. The rudder should not normally be used to induce roll through side slip because the transient side slip can induce very rapid roll rates with significant time delay. The combination of rapid roll rates and the time delay can startle the pilot, which in turn can cause the pilot to overreact in the opposite direction. The overreaction can induce abrupt yawing moments and violent out-of-phase roll rates, which can lead to successive cyclic rudder deflections, known as rudder reversals. As you can see in this chart, large aggressive control reversals can lead the loads that can exceed structural design limits. In quite a few simulators, pilots will not feel much of the lateral load factor. This can affect how aggressive they might be during training versus how aggressive they might be in the actual aircraft. The crash of American Airlines Flight 587 is an example where some people believe that had the simulator been a more faithful representation of the aircraft, perhaps then the flight aggressiveness might have been less. Positive static stability is defined as the initial tendency to return to an undisturbed state after a disturbance. This concept has been illustrated by the ball in a cup model. All transport airplanes demonstrate positive stability in at least some sense. The importance here is that the concepts of stability can apply to a number of different parameters all at the same time. For example, speed stability, the condition of an airplane returning to its initial trim airspeed after a disturbance, is familiar to most pilots. Airplanes that are Mach stable will tend to return to the original Mach number. Similarly, commercial airplanes are stable with respect to load factor. When a gust or other disturbance generates a load factor, the airplane is certificated to be stable. It will return to its initial trim load factor, which is usually 
One important side effect to stability is that it allows for some unintended operation. If the pilot releases the controls for a short period of time, stability will help keep the airplane at the condition at which it was left. Dihedral is the positive angle formed between the lateral axis of an airplane and a line that passes through the center of the wing. Dihedral contributes to the lateral stability of an airplane, and commercial jet transport airplanes are certificated to exhibit static lateral stability. A wing with dihedral will develop stable rolling moments with side slip. If the relative wind comes from the side, the wing into the wind is subject to an increase in lift. The wing away from the wind is subject to a decrease in angle of attack and develops a decrease in lift. The changes in lift affect a rolling moment, tending to raise the windward wing Hence, dihedral contributes a stable roll due to side slip. A swept wing is a wing that most often angles backwards from the wing root rather than in a straight sideways direction. Swept wings have an effect of delaying the shock waves and drag caused by compressibility as the airflow nears the speed of sound as it travels over the wing. This is beneficial for high-speed flight. In some airplanes, at speeds above MMO, a phenomenon known as Mach Tuck will occur. As an airplane flies at the critical Mach number, a shock wave will form over the wing and Mach Buffet will occur. Mach buffet will continue to increase with the increased speed of the aft movement of the shock wave. The wing's center of pressure also moves aft, causing a nose down tendency or tuck. Because of the changing center of lift, the wing resulting from the movement of the shock wave, the pilot will experience pitch change down tendencies. In modern transport airplanes, this phenomenon has largely been eliminated. When a swept wing is placed into a side slip, the upwind wing creates more lift than the downwind wing. This is because of the different angles of the relative wind impacting the two wings. The effect is that the upwind wing will produce more lift and the downwind wing will produce less lift, resulting in a rolling moment. This is most noticeable in high angles of attack. Additionally, the rolling moment will be more noticeable in a swept-wing aircraft compared to a straight-wing aircraft. With the exception of a crosswind landing, commercial transport swept-wing aircraft are not to be flown in a side slip. Ailerons, spoilers, Yaw dampeners and turn coordinators are designed to remove side slip from today's jet transport aircraft. The pilot's use of rudder is virtually eliminated in normal flight conditions. Use the rudder to eliminate side slip. Do not use the rudder to induce a roll. Airplanes are designed to be operated in well-defined envelopes of airspeed and altitude. The operational limits for an airplane, stall speeds, placarded maximum speeds and Mach numbers, and maximum certificated altitudes are in the AFM for each individual airplane. All aircraft are developed and certified so as to ensure their control is easy and well behaved throughout their operating envelope. Within these limits, the airplanes have been shown to exhibit safe characteristics.
As you can see in this chart, the green section represents normal, safe flight. The orange and white hashed areas shows area above normal cruising speed. The yellow area shows a stalled condition, and the red area represents structural failure. It is important that pilots understand this chart and the relationship that speed and load factor play. As you get to the edges of the envelope at high and low speed, any change to speed and or load factor could quickly take you out of the normal regime. At low airspeeds, a change in load factor can quickly cause the aircraft to stall. Careful monitoring of aircraft energy and speed is vital. For the same control surface movement at a constant airspeed, an airplane at 35,000 feet experiences a higher pitch rate than an airplane at 5,000 feet because there is less aerodynamic damping. Therefore, the change in angle of attack is greater, creating more lift and a higher load factor. If the control system is designed to provide a fixed ratio of control force to the elevator deflection, it will take less force to generate the same load factor as altitude increases. An additional effect is that for a given altitude change, the change in rate of climb is proportional to true airspeed. Thus, for an attitude change of 500 foot per minute at 290 knots indicated airspeed at sea level, the same change in attitude at 290 knots indicated at 35,000 feet would almost be 900 feet per minute. This characteristic is essentially true for small attitude changes, such as the kind used to hold altitude. It is also why smooth and small control inputs are required at high altitude, particularly when disconnecting the autopilot. At high speeds, when an upset occurs, it is important to make proper inputs to return the aircraft to a safe flight condition.